Assalamualaikum. Welcome to the Medicos channel. This is the first time you have the done the lab. That's the imperial infusion of the advising position. And secondly, you should choose the rig. And then kind of the and so the indirect infusion is seven, eight, nine. This time the nine script is
Right hand because some patient you can move his body when you do the procedure. You should feel the, uh, the yeah. other side of the ring. Okay. The other side of the ring. Just like here and the right direction. Okay. So every time when you push the needle in, you should pull back for a bit, for a bit to make sure you didn't uh, aspirate to the artery. Then if there's no blood, then you can push the other to the push the latter part inside. Okay, so. Okay, so something else. You can see that it can stop the injection. Small syringe, you uh, use that for the local anesthesia and also for the first check of the uh, the depth of the of the chest cavity for the chest wall. Maybe for some some somebody very fight or some somebody very thin, the depth is different. Okay, so then uh, after uh, make sure the spot is right, then we will use this kind of big needle. To do the aspiration. That's the uh, the formal one. Okay. So watch the hand. Okay. This kind of hand. Okay. Here. So to make the hand steady. Okay. Hand stand. Right. Okay. So I should put uh, put on the glove at the same time. Uh, then I can assist. Okay. So pretend I have put on the glove, okay. I will hold this here. And there is some, you can see the air or something happens in, in, in oh, it through yeah. it into the syringe. But if you can, or sometimes you can you, you, you find you can pull back pulling back it's very hard for me you can put hold this brush and do stuff and walk in slowly until you can see the injury or air into the insurance and stop it sorry so this 
accident open first he just lose his leg okay and so you can see and stop it and ask the system to hold it again okay and In the infusion, the temple, and every time the first day you have scrapped six minutes. Once you uh, put the syringe out uh, away from the tube, yeah. you should cut it. Cut the first one. Okay. Okay. This procedure is usually for the uh, diagnosis, but when you uh, use this procedure to drain the fluid to help the patient breathe, then you you, you may uh, do this kind of uh, the, the, the drain for, uh, for several times to drain the fluid outside as much as possible. For the first time, we usually have the uh, the the uh, upper and the upper limit uh, so to maximize maximize the uh, volume of the drainage the first time is 600 milliliter yes and the first time and the second time the upper limit is the 1000 milliliter okay if they are finished And then after the system, I'm drawing some antiseptic. Everything is ready, and you can put the things into the rubbish boxes. Then you should clean your table and put the, 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 the sharp things into the net basket. The basket bowl. Uh, the glue things into the yellow, the yellow plastic bag. Okay. This is like this. This is the yellow basket. And only the one thing can do. Black plastic is the color. The color is going to the black plastic. Okay. So make sure you can perform this kind of procedure. So this is our uh, objective this afternoon. So, uh, but only uh, we can use this kind of model, not on location. And um, uh, maybe when you return to your own country, uh, to your own hospital, you will perform this kind of procedure. Okay, so, uh, and here we have all these kind of things I will introduce to you on one of them. First, uh, you can see um, the, the chest x ray here. We call it the pleural effusion. I hope you have already learned about this kind of disease. And, and there's many kinds of uh, causes about this disease such as, can anyone tell me the causes of? Do you 
Maybe he doesn't learn anything about it. No? Any causes such as infection, such as trauma, such as internal bleeding, and so on. Okay. And here, uh, another kind of uh, classic uh, is pneumothorax. So here are all the air inside of the chest cavity, and the uh, lung here has collapsed into this kind of area. Okay. It's, this is, this area is different from um, this side is mm, different from that side. Okay. You can see the lung here. The, the, the tissue and here these are all the air okay so so for this kind of patient we do, we usually do this kind of procedure to drain the uh, the gas or drain the uh, blood or drain the fluid outside of the chest to help the patient okay so here uh, we
salvation to prepare this kind of thing. Uh, we have the glove, we have the uh, syringe, we have um, this forceps and uh, something else. Okay, so this whole package. And here we have the uh, preparation. You should prepare yourself and prepare the patients. You, maybe you can ask the patients. You can uh, whether he or she is allergic to something and. You should, you should ask uh, uh, the patient to uh, go to the bathroom before you do this kind of procedure. And also, you should uh, to figure out whether he or she can cooperate with this. You should do the evaluation. Then, um, you should prepare yourself, wash your hands, and also put a mask on and put a hat on. Okay? And uh, here, then we will put the patient in some certain position like that. Okay. So uh, bending over and uh, forehead onto the, 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 the back of the chair. This is the, the standard position okay, for this kind of uh, aspiration. And uh, uh, this is for the drainage of the uh, fluid. But when you look for the pneumothorax, when you drain the, uh, the gas out, it's uh, another different position. You should just uh, lay down. Okay. And uh, here uh, we should do the uh, oscillation and the percussion, and uh, sometimes we use the ultrasound. Thoracentesis is a procedure used to obtain a sample of fluid from the space around the lungs called the pleural space. This fluid is called pleural fluid and normally exists only as a thin layer in the area between the lungs and the chest wall. However, some conditions can cause an increased amount of pleural fluid to collect called a pleural effusion. Pleural effusions can be caused by many different conditions including pneumonia, heart failure, cancer or tuberculosis. In some cases, blood or other fluid may leak into the pleural space from another part of the body, causing the effusion. A pleural effusion may be detected during a physical examination or by diagnostic studies that create an image of the chest, such as a chest x-ray, chest CT scan, or chest ultrasound. The main reasons to perform a thoracentesis are to determine the cause of the pleural fluid and to relieve the shortness of breath by removing the fluid. A diagnostic thoracentesis is performed by removing a small sample of pleural fluid, like 60 ml, to determine the cause of a pleural effusion and to help doctors to select the best treatment and a therapeutic thoracentesis is used to remove a large volume of pleural fluid about 600 milliliter to 1200 milliliter to relieve the symptoms such as shortness of breath. By doing laboratory tests on the pleural fluid, the cause of the pleural effusion can easily be determined. Before a thoracentesis, a chest ultrasound will be done to identify the exact location of the pleural effusion and it is preferred because it is more accurate in determining the location of the effusion. The doctor will explain the procedure, describe potential complications and discuss why thoracentesis is necessary. If you have a bleeding disorder or are on medications that affect blood clotting, you may need extra care to minimize the risk of bleeding. In some cases, a blood test will be taken before the procedure to exclude any blood clotting abnormalities caused by diseases or medications. In most cases, a thoracentesis is performed without complications. When complications do occur, they are easily minor or are easily treated. Potential complications include pain, feeling faint, bleeding, infection, pneumothorax or collapsed lung, liver or spleen puncture, pulmonary edema. After the procedure, the doctor will observe the insertion site for signs of bleeding 
and assess your breathing for signs of lung collapse, that is pneumothorax or other complications. A routine chest x-ray is not necessary for the patients who tolerate thoracentesis well. If the procedure was complicated, a chest x-ray or ultrasound will be obtained. The doctor will examine the fluid, particularly its color and consistency, and will also send the fluid for laboratory test. In general, sedating medicines are not used during thoracentesis. If sedating medicines are used, you will need to be observed in the office for a few hours after the procedure and you will need assistance getting home. Patients should discuss these issues with their physician before the procedure. If any information is wrong, please let me know by comment. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to subscribe.